Hello, welcome wherever you are around the world to the 3 Z World Cup show. My name is Gabriel D'Angelo. It is wonderful to have your company. And speaking of wonderful company, sitting next to me, we have from the Irish Broadcasting Group, the jazz singer, Dianne Leonard. How are you, Dianne? I'm very safe, and yourself? Good, thank you. And sitting next to Dianne from the German Broadcasting Group, the butterfly effect, that is Bern Merkel. How are you, Bern? I'm good, thanks, Gabriel. Good evening. <laughs> well, uh, we're at the serious end, the tail end of the World Cup. Unfortunately, it's about to finish soon. But uh, the round of 16 seems like a lifetime ago now, but that's all over. The quarterfinals, they're halfway done. Uh, last night or early in the morning, Croatia versus Brazil, that was a one-all draw. And then Croatia ended up winning on penalties 4-2. The Netherlands versus Argentina, two-all draw. I think that, was, that one was a little bit more expected than the Croatia result. And that finished off 4-3 for Argentina. Um, fantastic results there, depending on what country uh, you support. But firstly, Croatia versus Brazil. I mean, let's get into that one. Um, yes, I think a, a sharp intake of breath is, uh, is needed to discuss that, uh, Dianne. But uh, what did you make of that one? Um, I, look, firstly, we were saying before um, today's recording that the last nine international games in the situation of Croatia have uh, eight of those nine have ended up in a penalty shootout. So I would not want to be any country going to the penalty shootout against them because they're experienced. But it was one of those um, games where it just, it didn't seem to be picking up too much momentum and it was just gridlocked. And then we get to the penalty kick out and it's like the team we didn't expect to leave, Brazil, Gonski. Yeah. I think that you, you make a good point. I think Croatia are sort of like the new Germany in a way. Like, you have to beat them in the, in the 90 minutes because once you play in, you know, penalty okay, shootouts yeah. or uh, extra time, they've got you. And, I mean, Brazil was definitely the better team, right? And mm. I was already expecting during the 90 minutes. Similar with other games that we saw in the World Cup before that, okay, it's, it's going to be not a done deal, but, but Brazil is really creating their chances. They are, they are the dominating team. Um, particularly in the second half yeah. and um, and then when Neymar scored this wonderful goal and that showed me also from from a soccer or fan perspective how easy sometimes football can be you know <laughs> yes. one two one two and then you're in front of the goalkeeper and boom and then it was like the three triple z team the way, the way we play it's <laughs> well, exactly I, I, like that i wish with all respect <laughs> but um, but but then yeah as you said croatia coming back so so that's really something i found impressive never underestimate them you know and never take them for okay that's that's a done deal yeah. uh, i already had saw a few news like oh is modric getting too tired you know mm. um slowly getting into that age in his late 30s mm. and and from that end it's sad to see brazil gone out of the world cup based on their performance against south korea which was really impressive so i thought yeah. they are now on the right track but on the other end this is still the nice thing. Some yeah. things are still unpredictable. Well, this has been an unpredictable World Cup, hasn't it? It has, but also to the Modric point, did you see that half volley he kicked in that game? Yeah. That's not a tired player. That's yeah. <laughs> well, that's someone playing for his country, yeah. really. Yeah. I mean, that, like, that, that sort of pride for uh, Croatia. And I mean, he's still playing full time uh, all the time for, for Real Madrid, right? Yeah. But I mean, so. Just a small club. But <laughs> But, but, <laughs> but in the end, I mean, uh, congratulations to, to Croatia. And um, yeah, it's, it's sad to see Brazil gone out, as I said. But in the end, if you don't finish, we have seen it so many games. Yeah. Germany, you know, like yeah. um, uh, Spain, and then you're, you're, you're gone. I, I think there should be much more credit um, placed on Croatia as a footballing country. I mean, this is their third semi-final appearance when you think about it. Their first World Cup in 98 semi-finalists. The last World Cup 2018, they made it all the way to the final. They're here in another semi-final. They've knocked out Brazil, who arguably was probably the best team in the tournament, the way they've been playing. So, uh, you know, Croatia for a long time, wonderful players, fantastic ability. Double Shuka in the Double Shuka, yeah, yeah. Boban, Prozanovski, you know, Suka, you, you name it. Croatia have always had a, a factory of wonderful players. So, like now that they're in another semi-final at this major tournament, the World Cup, will they finally get the respect that's, that's like, well, Croatia, this like, last World Cup wasn't a fluke. They're damn good. 
I, th I think they have the, res the respect already, Gabriel. I think it's also like coming from, they are difficult to play. Um, I think in particular from a German perspective, um, we had two or three games, uh, World Cup, European Cup, where we lost against Croatia. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's really tough. To play. Nobody likes playing against them. And uh, I think now they are also getting to that level a bit more that respect um, that, okay, not only we need to bring 100% to beat them, we can actually lose against them. They are, again, proven they are a world-class team. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They're also bravely one of the few countries still playing free-form soccer out on the pitch. The football is not as set play as some other countries are. Yeah, that's, that's I, I think point. that's actually uh, one of their strengths, to be honest. That's where they surprise people. Yeah, well, that's true. But uh, Croatia, through to the semi-final, Brazil, Outst dancing to the to the airport. <laughs> Outstanding <laughs> goalkeeper performance as well. Well, right? that's yeah, so, that's very true. But yeah. um, Brazil, you know, we can go on about them for for the rest of the show. But also at the same time, they they did have a touch of arrogance about them. There was this sort of like. They probably thought they were going to win it. I mean, the, the way they behaved against South Korea, it's one thing for the players to dance and celebrate, but having the coach there dancing there with them, it's like, come on, coach. You, you I think maybe part of that was because they just come off a loss to Cameroon in the group stages. Yeah, but they, they, they didn't really try that. I mean, not to take away from Cameroon's performance, but like the round of 16 is actually quite tricky. It's probably the trickiest because teams like Brazil, teams like France, they don't want to show all their cards on the table too much. So they still want to keep some of their secrets. They don't want to give away everything. But once they make it to the quarterfinals, it's like, OK, throw everything against the wind. Where's the line, though, between arrogance and just national pride, though? And culture well, as well. I, I mean, mean, I know with, with Brazil, it's very extreme. I mean, you've seen them uh, 2014 after they lost against Germany. You know, it was like devastating for them. They are they are crying a lot because of sadness and when they are losing but also crying when they are f of, out of joy when they yeah. when they are winning so I, I i get your point but i didn't make too much out of that um, uh, dancing and now they are out anyway right so but but i'm not not happy for that because um yeah they were just unlucky and yeah i mean but like if they want to dance they can dance yeah. and they do dance quite well but I'm just saying, like, the players can do that. But having Tite, the coach, come in and dancing with them, it's a little bit like, come on, you're, you're the coach. You need a sort of set hey, stand. can be yellow and red card, just like a player who's yeah. so I mean, can't really but, but, like, if, if he wants to dance in the change rooms after the game, go right ahead, and he probably did. Yeah. But um, after a few Caipirinhas, I'm pretty sure. But uh, just briefly, let's talk about Netherlands and Argentina. Messi, he's still got a chance to win that World Cup. They defeated the Netherlands, but it was a cracking game. 2-0 up Argentina and I thought, I mean, Netherlands were, were not convincing um, for, for me in terms of how far they can go, maybe semi-final, final. They got a little bit better in, in the round of the last 16 where they um, uh, have beaten uh, USA, I think it was, right? But yeah, coming back after the 2-0 down and I thought they had that momentum in the extra time. I was surprised that they didn't use it more, so I felt like they were stepping back and again giving the pitch to Argentina and just being a bit more reactive. A bit too conservative, do you think? Yeah, I, I don't know what 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 Van Gaal's approach uh, during that extra time was. If you score that late, it was a magnificent um, free kick, so you know everybody was expecting <laughs> was the direct <laughs> shot on goal, yeah, and yeah. it was was awesome. But in the end, um, I think Argentina definitely, in particular at the end of the extra time, invested more. So I think yeah. they deserved it, even if it was in, um, in a penalty shootout. Again, great goalkeeper, mm -hmm. uh, Martinez, Martinez, in, yeah, yeah. yeah. In, the, in the penalty shootout. So, uh, yeah, and, and for Messi, the, the dream is, is still, still, alive. still alive. Yeah, yeah. And arguably it could be his last World Cup, given... I'm oh, pretty sure, yeah. Where, well, they haven't announced it, but, you know, let's live on in hope that he can keep going. But... I, I, was, I found myself watching a game in the first two halves where it was like a dance. It was going from one side of the pitch to the other. Because one thing Argentina is very good at is they will walk the ball up and then they explode in this space mm. that they're expecting. And the Netherlands contained them as far as I was concerned. Yes, they were two up, but it could have been worse had they not sort of had some rhythm and control over the game. Then we get to that, as you say, brilliant goal in extra time in the second half. And I was just about... Jumping off the couch, <laughs> losing my voice, screaming for the Netherlands. Damn, but she didn't lose it completely. <laughs> but then, 
you get to the extra time and it was two different teams on the pitch. Yeah. And it really was a game changer leading up to so that result, yeah. Exactly. That's, um, and, it, yeah. And interesting what they're going to do now against Croatia. You know, it, I think it's a... Yeah. Yes. You still kind of feel Argentina's the favourite going into that game. Yes. But having but seen now Brazil <laughs> against Croatia, <laughs> yeah. and I it's mean. a semi-final at a World Cup, so I think it's... Well, Japan against Croatia, that was from the round of 16, that was my pick of the game, and that was the most exciting one for me out of all of them. Yeah. Just the intensity of it. So Croatia just seemed to be improving. And they've taken it to the penalty box every time, so please understand and don't find yourself in the penalty box. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's 50-50 for me, that, yeah. that, well, that the, yeah, final. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you on that one, but uh, Argentina, Croatia, the semi-final game Wednesday, the 14th of December, 6am Australian Eastern Standard Time. That's going to be a fantastic game. We could talk about that all day, but we've got more to do. We'll be back after the break. Uh, we've got on the other side of the break. We have Elsa Mangan from Go Soccer Mums. But first, our friend Brian Yap. Tell us things, won't you? Hey, it's me again. You know how Melbourne is the coffee capital of Australia, and you know how we boast about how great our coffee is. Well, you must be pretty good if you're the best in Melbourne. And Albert Street Cafe is the best. They have the best coffee and sandwiches in Melbourne. I know, well, that's a big claim, but trust me, one visit to Albert Street Cafe and you'll be hooked. Come and see for yourself. Meet Tony and his friendly staff and see why they're the best. Albert Street Cafe, 306 Albert Street, Brunswick. One of the main reasons why football is so popular is that anyone can play it. Anywhere, at any time, and at any skill level. Even those who are out of practice or who just want to socialize can enjoy and play the beautiful game. And one of these initiatives that offer this experience is the Go Soccer Mums. To talk about the Go Soccer Mums, we have with us from Football Victoria, Elsa Mangan. Elsa, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. So what exactly is the Go Soccer Mums? Uh, so Go Soccer Mums is a, an introductory football program for women from all walks of life, where they get the opportunity to learn about football, but also have fun, be other people in the community and just get active as well in a fun um, learning environment. So one of the things I saw was, I love the hashtags because it's Football Victoria sponsored by Vic Health yeah. and it was hashtag no experience required and I love the second one, hashtag no judgment. Yeah. And there is some amazing footage of women who have come from challenging backgrounds playing Go Soccer Mums mm -hmm. and it's quite inspirational but as a woman, it can be very difficult if you've been sort of sedentary and not moving around for a couple of years mm -hmm. to get the courage, as one of them said, to get out of my car and walk onto that pitch. Mm -hmm. And it's everyone says that it's fun, it's fantastic. So where can we find you to get involved? Yeah, um, so yeah, you're right. The hardest part, I think, for a lot of things like Go Soccer Moms or just getting active is getting there. And yeah. that's the hard part. Done once you're there, it's, yeah, um, it's, um, yeah, it's super fun and, and easy. So... Um, how you can get involved or where you can get involved. There's a range of programs at a number of clubs. So we run Go Soccer Mums through clubs across Victoria. And um, at the moment, we've got a, a really great range of clubs who are delivering the program in term four. Um, so, yeah, you can find those on gofootball.com.au. Um, but, yeah, all over the state pretty much. So anywhere from, say, Aspendale to um, Melton Phoenix, out that way. Um, there's a range of clubs and some in the CBD as well now too, which is yeah. great. And they work kind of in, when I've seen them advertised, they're by term. So the clubs will set up a term with different times of the day. Yes. Does that mean you're, you've got some programs running for, say, mums after school drop off versus an evening when they're finished work? Is it, it seems to be very flexible. Yeah, yeah. So we work with our clubs to determine what works best for their community, um, whether it be through running it at same, along the same time as um, junior trainings, and there's a lot of um, parents and mothers in particular there anyway. Um, whereas some clubs work really well, um, yeah, like you said, after that school drop-off time when they um, they might be located near a school or a daycare centre where they can just drop off and, um, yeah, get, get a chance to get active. And how did you self get involved with it? So where does this, does this love for soccer come from? Um, for myself? Yes. Oh, um, well, yeah, just through, I guess, where I grew up in northern New South Wales. Um, the school I went to was really big on, um, on football, so... Yeah, really grew a love uh, for it through that and then um, yeah, convinced my parents to let me sign up for the local club and just went from there through playing, coaching, administrating and um, yeah, now really lucky to, to work at Football Victoria. So 
Um, yeah, that's my love for, for football, but my love for programs like Ghost Soccer Moms in particular as well is through my um, through my mum, who took part in a similar program back home and just seeing how the impact it had on her. And um, yeah, she met other people in the community. Um, she always drove me and my sisters around for, for so many games and trainings and just had the opportunity to learn about it herself and experience it herself. Um, yeah, really developed a love for programs. And it's not in particular only for moms, so it can also yeah. be a woman that doesn't have a child. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So it can be for, for, any, for any woman, um, whether they have children or not. Um, anyone who's just sort of interested in football or um, just wanting a, an opportunity to get active through something new. Yeah. How can the club be a part of the Ghost Soccer Mums program? Yeah, so um, to be a part of the Ghost Soccer Mums program, it's just as simple as reaching out to us at um, soccermums at footballvictoria.com.au. Um, and we can sort of step you, step, step you through the steps of becoming what we call a go-book provider um, and completing the training and then you receive all the support and resources to run the program as well, which includes your equipment pack, um, the project manager support, delivery training and um, all the promotional resources as well. Yeah. And how did Go Soccer Mums start at, at the beginning? So how did everything sort of get into place? Yeah, so it came about, as you mentioned, we're um, funded by Big Health, so the Active Women and Girls strategy. Um, where they funded um, yeah, the program through a partnership with Football Victoria. And I think it was identified, I guess, through Big Health Research in that there is yeah, a high proportion of women in particular who are less active or inactive. And um, yeah, they're partnered with a range of state sporting associations to think of, I guess, new and innovative ways to offer physical activity, which um, yeah, obviously sort of benefits Big Health's um, interest in getting more women more active, but then also the interest of um, the state, state sporting associations in getting more women into their sports, so, okay. yeah. During lockdowns, was there any, <laughs> may, obviously all those hurdles for everybody around Victoria in terms of playing and all that, did Go Soccer Mums have any initiatives in that regard in trying to keep in contact with their members? Yeah, so we tried to, I mean, it's obviously quite difficult with the, the constraints of lockdown in, in terms of how we can get out and about. Um, so in terms of participation and, and club capacity as well, um, it was quite limited, but we tried to, um, yeah, I guess keep in touch with clubs and any interested clubs who are sort of interested in starting the program or continuing the program post lockdown, whenever that was going to be, we didn't know at the time. Um, so yeah, we ran quite a few online interviews in terms of delivering connection sessions and club connection sessions and um, delivering um, yeah online sessions to sort of increase capacity of clubs in terms of Go Soccer Mums, so yeah. So you recently had your inaugural Go Soccer Mums Cup, the yeah. Knox. I yes. think it was five aside, yes. three games per team, yep. and the top two went for it. Yeah. Who won? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it was such, such a great day, and it was so great to finally be finally be able to um, see all the planning actually, yeah, come to fruition in terms of the Go, uh, Go Soccer Mums Cup day. Um, yeah, it had to be rescheduled a number of times due to lockdowns and other um, issues. So Killer Park um, were our inaugural Go Soccer Mums Cup day champions. Um, it was a really great match to watch against Brunswick City um, in that, that final thing. It went to extra time and we were wow. yeah, thinking it might go to penalties as well. But it was just so great to see um, two of our really well-established Go Soccer Mums clubs yeah. Um, sort of, yeah, fighted out for the inaugural you know, cup. And um, yeah, just to see everyone there on the day as well it was really great. So I think there might be capacity to have every six months, like a winter and a summer cup, just to increase participation? Yeah, well, it's something we're sort of considering in, in providing more game-based experiences for our Go Soccer Mums participants. Yeah. Initially, it is a training-based program, but that's the feedback we're getting from a lot of our participants. They just love that um, that game experience and that sort of extra level of added competitive, competitiveness. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, a lot of the feedback from the tournament was around just, like, more, 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 like, um, so, yeah, it's something we're sort of working on at the moment, whether it be um, definitely an annual continuation of that cup, but then sort of offering maybe um, sort of like hub based game day experiences um, moving forward. Yeah, sounds wonderful. And how excited are you that the Women's World Cup is coming to Australia and New Zealand next year? Yeah, <laughs> super, super excited. I think, like most of us in the, the football world, um, I yeah, can't even imagine what it's going to be like come you know, July next year. But um, yeah, very excited, and I think a lot of our Ghost Soccer Mums participants and clubs are too. Will you only watch games in Melbourne, or do you have any travel plans yeah. uh, to watch <laughs> Australia maybe in, in Sydney at the opening game? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I actually booked tickets with my family up in northern New South Wales to watch the, um, the Brisbane game versus yeah. um, Nigeria. 
Uh, and yeah, obviously Melbourne and hopefully I can get to Sydney and some other locations as well. And who's going to win? Oh. <laughs> Very early to predict, oh. right? <laughs> no, that's a good question. I'm going to say Australia, I reckon. Okay. Yeah. In terms of Go Soccer Mums, it seems like the underlying theme of it is the inspiration that it gives to a lot of the participants. Is there any particular, is there a particular story about someone who was a participant at Go Soccer Mums that really sort of like, wow, this is just an amazing project? Yeah, I think, um, and as you mentioned, there's a few on our Football Victoria website that you can watch. And one in particular was a participant, um, Shelley Christie, who she had, um, and yeah, just seeing, I guess, um, she's been a part of the program a lot longer than I have um, in terms of my role, but just sort of, yeah, getting to know her and listen to her story, having experienced a number of health issues, um, that sort of, I guess, um, yeah, sort of, uh, that was a catalyst in her and sort of taking on Go Soccer Mums. And just the impact it's had on not just her health, but also her, I guess, all realms of well-being for her. And um, she's also, yeah, become a deliverer um, and taken on quite a few roles at the club. And just seeing the impact it's had on her and um, her life, it's just, yeah, one of the many great stories. That the I, think her, I think she said um, that her family saved her life, but Go Soccer Mums gave her inspiration, gave her a future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, so that's pretty powerful. Yeah. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. And she's a yeah, great advocate for the program down that Martha. Okay. Yeah. And we always talk about participation rates after the World Cup. Does the same thing happen with the Ghost Soccer Mums? Like every World Cup, is there a boost in participation rates? Yeah, that's a really interesting question. I guess I have been um, in this role whilst there has been a World Cup. Um, I mean, right now, I guess. But, um, and you do, you see, I guess, the, the, the buzz and the hype and um, everything else in the community. So it'd be really, I'm really interested to see the impact that the Women's World Cup in particular next year is going to have. On participation rates in general, but particularly in terms of go soccer mums, I think like it'll be really interesting to see. I'm hoping so. Yeah, well, I assume you will. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost being at the end of 22. So, what are the plans for for next year apart from the tournament that's going to be done again? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we're really lucky in that our, um, our funding has been extended to mid next year. Oh, that's so great. That's yeah. Give, yeah. Give us um yeah, a continued, I guess, boost um, in terms of the program, in terms of ongoing sort of running. So a big focus for us is um, program scale now that we're sort of in a consistent sort of delivery landscape out of lockdown. So, um, yeah, we're going to try and get as many programs up and going as we can. So really working with a number of clubs, but also diversifying the locations it can be run. So working with a, a number of councils at the moment if they want to run school, uh, school holiday program. But also local businesses, if like for example, like a lunchtime program for women in their workplace. Um, so yeah, scale, diversifying the landscapes that can be delivered within, and um, yeah, just really I guess trying to add to the quality and the value of the program whilst we can. Before we let you go, can you please give us the details of Go Soccer Mums? So if anybody wants to be a part of Go Soccer Mums, where do they go? Uh, yeah, so you can head to footballvictoria.com.au and just follow the prompts for Go Soccer Mums on there. Um, for our current Go Soccer Mums locations, you can go to gofootball.com.au and again follow the Go Soccer Mums prompts. Or if you want to reach out to us, you can get us on Soccer Mums at footballvictoria.com.au. Okay, so thank you very much for your time, Elsa. All the best to you and to uh, everybody involved in Go Soccer Mums. It's a wonderful project and we hope it gets bigger and better as time goes on. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me on board. Not a problem. We have to take a quick break. On the other side of the break, we have Skip Fulton from the South Melbourne Football Club. But first, here's our friend Brian Yap. Take it away, Yappers. Hey, tradies and DIYers. Listen to this. Bowens have everything you need to fix up your bathroom, your bedroom, your kitchen, your whole house if you want to. Bowens are the builder's choice for a reason. If you want to get the job done properly, done professionally, and done on time and on a budget, you know where to go. That's right, follow that big yellow sign there and head to Bowens. Bowens have been servicing the community for 128 years, so they know what they're doing. Come visit the friendly staff and ask how Bowens can help you today. Bowens, the builder's choice.